People talk about net zero by 2050. Guys, we have five years left. It's not 2050. We have five years left until we reach a point of irreparable damage. We cannot move back because what happens is we know the planet's heating up, okay, and we hear about it in the news and then we get on with our life because the ramifications of the planet heating up are not really explained to us. So I'll tell you, you are probably so careful about what you eat and you want to eat the best nutrition and antioxidants. You care about what you're putting into your mouth. You take about 20,000 breaths of air a day. If you knew what was in the air you were breathing, you would close your mouth. You, you sweat, right? And you notice that you sweat. We sweat because that is our mechanism to stay alive. So at some point in five years time, our bodies are going to become too hot. We will get to a point where we can no longer sweat. What happens when humans can't sweat? They die. But wouldn't that just be fixed by people moving from warmer climate to colder climate? So an unexpected ramification of the earth heating up is the refugee crisis. People and communities are already leaving their hometowns because they cannot survive the weather conditions. In five years, where are we all going to congregate? This is why Elon is trying to take people to Mars. I truly do understand the logic behind right. his wish, but if there's a way we can stay here and actually use the power of Mother Nature to help our planet and undo all the crap that the humans have polluted yeah. the planet with. We have the, the capability using the Earth's minerals, ambient air, to reverse all of this harm that us humans have done. If you wouldn't mind, maybe just take 30 seconds to look up at your, your carbon footprint. For example, when you open a web page, you don't think, but that releases six grams of carbon because of the energy it took to open that page. If you could just look up 30 seconds of your day, look up what is your carbon footprint and how can you mitigate it? Make the smallest, tiniest changes and it will change the world. We all together can contribute to evolution, together. And we can do it for free. It doesn't have to cost us anything, time, resources. Just make tiny changes. Let's contribute to evolution together and let's save our planet because we only have five years. So that there is hope and there are incredible inventors who are doing great yes. work, but they're not getting attention. Nope. I mean, COP27 gets a lot of attention, but technologies like yours and other tech that's emerging deserves that attention too. Yep. I think when it comes to global warming, while I have supreme respect for Greta Thunberg and, mm. and what she's done, mm. We also need to be paying attention and giving media coverage to inventors. Actually, something interesting is that we try to register our product with the carbon registry, such as Gold Standard and Vera. And what, what that is, is that they will give you the stamp of approval and say, yes, we agree that your technology is reducing carbon by a million tons a year. Here are a million carbon credits. And you must have heard about the carbon credit industry. So you plant trees, you get carbon credits. You use solar energy, the company gets carbon credits. So I spoke to the registry and I said, give me some carbon credits for all this so I, I can pass that profit on to charity or something, do something with it. And he said, yeah, you know, actually your technology is new. So this is going to take four years. And it really pisses me off because I'm trying to innovate. I'm trying to help the world. And it's going to take four years for you to recognize that. Something is not adding up here. This and is And the world has right. five years. Five oh, yeah, years five before years. we hit irreversible <laughs> climate change. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense. There needs to be more investment, more people to be able to quantify what is going on because then it will actually inspire more inventors, more entrepreneurs to help the environment. If we're not going to get the feedback and the response we need, how are we going to be motivated to do more? How can we be more aware? What, what do we need to be aware of? So the, the main problem is that the earth is heating up too quickly. We need to slow that down and mitigate it. And it's nice that COP has these conferences that take 600 jets to fly in to attend the conference. But if you can just focus on heating, what does heating mean? We're not, we're not typically told. Heating means that communities are just being wiped out. Wildlife is being wiped out. In the past 40 years, take a guess, what percentage of wildlife do you think have declined? 98%? Yes. If this was happening to humans, I think people would be talking about it. Right. Because you know what is going to be happening to humans very, very soon. So my, my advice would be is just to be mindful. You're mindful of what you eat. You're mindful of who you hang out with. You're mindful of, of how well you want to sleep that night. Just try to be mindful of what is 
going on and try to collectively talk about it. Tell your friends, tell your families, let's talk about it and let's stand together and contribute to evolution in a positive way, not a negative way. It doesn't have to be, you know, people ask me, oh, but you're not an environmentalist. You're not some tree hugging hippie. I said, no, you don't have to be to care about the environment. Be whoever the hell you want, but care about the resources you are taking from every day. How about we give back? so that our kids' kids can still be around. It's a really small ask, and if we all just do 1%, that is a lot.